I'm at High Force, which is one of the UK's most impressive uh, waterfalls. And you can see at the top of the force, there is a layer band of basalt, and then underneath that, there's a thin layer of sandstone, and then a layer of uh, limestone. And the basalt is much more resistant to weathering than the other parts. So as the river was wearing down through it, when it finally cut through the basalt, then all of the softer layers eroded away very quickly to produce the nice waterfall that we see here. So the basalt layer that we see at the top of the waterfall is the wind sill. And this is really quite old. So a lot of the basalt that you see around uh, in northern Britain is associated with the tertiary igneous province and the things that happened around Skye and Rum. But this is much older than that. This is about 300 million years old. So uh, at the end of the Carboniferous, Pangaea had been uh, constructed and some of the subduction that, that was happening to the south of it actually put the north of the Pangaea supercontinent in tension. So we ended up with these big rift valleys opening, so the Midland Valley, uh, and associated with that crustal thinning, you got a little bit of melting of the mantle, production of basalt, which is what you get when you melt mantle peridotite, and that was then injected into the, the shallow crust. So this is a sill, and with sills, the intrusion is parallel to with the layering of the rock. So these are sedimentary rocks with horizontal layers, so the sills are parallel with that and they're horizontal. Dikes cut across the layering. So this is a really nice example of a sill. It's been cooled from both sides, and so you get columnar basalt jointing, cooling cracks, which propagate in from the edges down perpendicular to the direction. So you can see very nice hexagonal cooling joints across the sill here. And in these blocks that I'm sitting on, you can see these hexagonal uh, joint sets.